Personal Finance Excel Practice Problem. Saving for down payment on a home. Prepare to get financially fit practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to the Excel worksheet, that's okay because we'll basically work this from a blank sheet. If you do have access, there's three tabs down below. There's an example tab, a practice tab, and a blank tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. We've got the information on the left-hand side. We're gonna be saying that we're saving up for the down payment on a home, our starting point, which we can vary and alter once we have our worksheet set up will be that we're going to save 7500 for six years at a rate of the six percent we're then going to see how much down payment we would have after the six year time period we'll calculate that a few different ways and then once we have that we can think about how much we might have to finance considering that we need to put 20 percent down and assuming we can finance basically the rest once we have that we'll then construct our amortization tables and our yearly basically summary of that amortization table after that's all set up then we could alter some of our data on the left hand side and run different scenarios with it that being one of the big benefits of doing this information or working these kind of things in excel so the second tab the practice tab is going to be a tab that has some pre-formatted worksheets so if you would like to use it then you don't have to do as much formatting the third tab is going to be the blank tab which we're just basically going to add the formatting working in essence from a blank sheet just from the scratch working from that scratch working from scratch on the left you can add that scratch if you don't have this worksheet if you don't have this worksheet i would suggest selecting the whole thing right clicking formatting the cells to currency brackets uh, no dollar sign and remove the decimals that's my starting point and then whenever i need to vary from that i'm going to vary from that i also make it bold by the way but you don't really need to uh, I think it's easier to see on the presentations that way. And then you could just add this information, making that a percent, and we're good to go, ready to start. Okay, so we're going to say that we're going to put 7500 down each year to save for a down payment on the home. We've got these six uh, years, and the, the rate is going to be 6%. So we can do the easiest starting point is just a future value calculation. And this is also the most flexible because it allows us to change the years more easily, but we'll double check it a few different ways practicing our future value calculation. So we're gonna say future value, uh, and let's just call it FV. This is an annuity formula. I'm gonna do it by saying negative instead of equals, which is probably not the most proper way to do it, but the fastest, I believe. Future value, we're gonna pick up the rate. This is per year, that's where we're gonna keep it per year. We're not going down to months, so it's gonna be easy as something that's really easy to do, like counting to three. That's how easy it is. And then we're gonna say that the next one's gonna be the number of periods, which is six. And so that's in years two, so then comma, and then it's an annuity. So we're gonna be picking up the payments and not the present value because we're gonna put that 7,600 in each year for six years. So we're gonna say enter and there it is let's make that blue and bordered that is an estimate we don't we, there's probably pennies in there well hold on a second i don't want to make it white right there that's not what i want to do there are pennies but we're going to round it right there now uh, we're going to double check that because i'd like to see let's make it borders that's what i wanted to do that's the other thing blue and borders let's double check it with an actual annuity calculation so i can envision what is actually happening i want to see my money grow so I'm going to go to the home tab. Let's paint brushy this skinny and make this one a skinny. And let's see how does this growing money thing happen? Well, let's build a table on it. Periods, investment, and then income. These are my headers of the table, by the way. Balance. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this a little bit larger because I can't see the words, all the words that I typed. I want to see those words so it tells me what the what's in below them that's what tells me what's under them so i'm going to then go to the home tab we're going to go to the font group let's make this a black and white up top alignment and center and then we're going to have six periods so i'm just going to say one two three four five six now you could use an auto fill to do that but i just kind of like typing them in if there's only six periods because it's it's fun muy divertido we're going to select those home tab. We're going to go alignment and center it. We can make this one a little bit skinnerized it. Let's skinnerize it because it's we don't need that much space for numbers. 
And then we're going to put 7,500 in per period. So I'm going to say this is equal to 7,500. We're going to put in each year. I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard, putting a dollar sign before the B and 4, making it absolute. In other words, you only need a mixed reference, but an absolute works because I want to copy it on down. I'm going to do that by just double clicking the fill button, handle button thing, and it just copies it down. Boom. And then we're not going to have any income in year one because you got to be careful on when you're putting the 7,500 and how the annuity table works. Are you putting it in like at the beginning or end of the year? So here we think about it as no income happening in year one. That's how the annuity, normal annuity formula works. And then in year two, that's when we're gonna have the income uh, that's gonna be generated. So just be aware of the annuity calculation beginning periods and how that's working. That's one reason it's nice to double check your annuity future value calculation with an actual table. So we're gonna say this is gonna be equal to the 7,500 times the 6%. And that's how much we're gonna earn in uh, the next year. We're gonna say this is gonna be equal to the prior balance, 7,500 plus the sum of the 7,500 we're gonna put in at the end of year two, we're assuming, and the earnings that we had during year two of the 450, close up the brackets and enter. Then we'll do it again. We could copy it down, but I'm gonna do it a couple times so we can see how this thing works. 15,450 times the 6% tab. Now this equals the prior balance of the 15,450 plus the sum of the 7,500 we're gonna put in at the end of year three and the 927 uh, that we earned during the year. Enter, and then it closes up the brackets for me. Let's do it a couple more times. This is this number times the 6%. And now we have equals the prior balance of the 23,877 plus the sum of the 7,500 we're going to put in at the end of the year. That's how the annuity formula is thinking. And then the fourth 1,433 that we earned. Notice you might be thinking, hey, I'm going to put the 7,005 in during the year. It's an approximation. This is kind of that we have to kind of think about it that way if you're using a, no, a normal annuity or you could try to break it out on a monthly basis and what if you want to get more precise and whatnot but it is an estimate in any case let's let's stop this from here and let's try to copy it down because this is getting tedious let's let's delete this you're going to delete i'm going to delete it are you sure yeah I, I can do it again so if i try to copy can i just copy this one down if i copy that down this is a problem that's a problem so let's delete that. I think I need an absolute reference or mixed reference. You need something, if it's in the data set outside of your table that you're working on, that's when you really need to generally absolutize it. That's B5 or make it a mixed reference. I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard, making an absolute dollar sign before the B and the five. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute will work. I'm gonna select these two cells and now I should just be able to double click the fill button and there it goes, summing it, uh, summing it on down. So we're ending at the 52,315. We've kind of double checked that number right there. So we see how it's calculated in a bit more visual way. So let's go ahead and bracketize this one. And just to, just to see it another way, uh, you can also break this down to an annuity of one, a series of annuity one calculations, which is another way to just kind of understand these present value calculations. So I'm gonna put my cursor on the F column and I'm gonna say the paintbrush and let's just do it another way, which is kind of an overkill. It's already dead and you keep on killing it again. You can't kill it again, you overkilled it. This is overkilling, but I wanna make sure that this we've got this down cold. This needs to be down cold, so we gotta overkill it until it's cold. Okay, I don't know what I'm I don't know what I'm talking about. Sorry. But anyways, we're gonna do this another way. We're gonna select these items. We're gonna go to the home tab, alignment, and center. And then we're gonna go to the to the bucket, make it black and white. Let's make the investment column a little bit larger. And let's do the periods again, which are one, two, three, four, five, six. And this will be the total down below. And this time I'll just put the 7,005. Let's do that the same way. I'll just say equals this number. And that way I don't need to absolutize it. I'll just copy that one down because it'll copy the same relative number like that. And then we'll just take, we'll just do the, the future value for, for whatever time frame that we are in. So in other words, this 7,500, uh, if we put it in at the beginning, 
will be in there for, we're going to say, the next five years to year two through six. This one will be in there for the next three through uh, six. So let's do let's do that kind of calculation using a present value of one to see how much we'll have at the end of each of each time frame. So we will do that thusly. Hopefully that I like saying thusly. It makes you sound makes you sound smart when you say thus thusly. In any case equals the future value. Uh, let's make it a negative future value brackets. And then we're going to pick up the rate, which is all the way on the left now. It's going to be that 6%. I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard to make it absolute. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one works. Comma. Then the number of periods. This time, I'm going to do it one by one. And so what I'd like to do is this one's going to have five periods that we're going to put this singular investment in that it's going to have time to grow over. So I'm going to calculate that this way because I would like to be able to, instead of just typing five, in other words, I want it to be able to copy it down. So I want to pick up this number six and then minus this number one. And so that'll come up with five, which are five periods. And when I copy it down, I would like it to keep that number six and then subtract two, which would be four, six minus three, three, and so on and so forth. That means this last one, that six, needs to be an absolute reference. That's in cell L7. So I'm gonna say F4, it could be a mixed reference, but an absolute one works. And then comma, we're not gonna use the payment because this will not be an annuity this time, but we're just gonna use a series of payments of one, so another comma. And there is the present value, which is gonna be the 7,500 and enter. Now I could copy that down. And now I've got the series of, of payments. This one's gonna grow after five, after, un, until we get to year six by the 10,037. This one will grow from 7,500 to 9,469. This one will grow to 8,933. And as we get closer to the end point, that investment that we put in is not gonna grow as much because it doesn't have as much time if it grows at that steady rate of the 6%. If we sum up at the bottom here, that's another way we can think about getting to that 52,315. I know we, we did that already, but this is another way to, to see it. And so you want to be able to see it multiple ways, don't you? You've got to look at it from different angles. Okay, that has been thoroughly, it's cold. It's been overkill to the point that it's really cold at this time. So now let's take that and let's assume that we're going to have a 20% down and think about how much loan we could get then. So I'm gonna select column K, I'm gonna to go to the home tab and paint brushy and then put that right here in O for a skinny O. Skinny O! And then we're gonna say, this is gonna be the home purchase amount. So I've got 52,315 to put down. That's what I'm gonna throw down on it. So I'm gonna then, let's make this black and white. Home tab, font group, make this black and white. And I'm going to say that I'm throwing down payment, I'm throwing down 52,315. And that's what I'm throwing down on the table. And then I'm going to say that the down payment rate is 20%. So we got 20% down payment. Let's put, let's make that a percent and underline it. And so that means that the home price price could be equal to the 52,315 divided by the 20%. So I should be able to purchase the 261,574 if I could finance the rest of the home, if I was able to put 52,315 down. Let's check that. Let's double check that. Check figure. Check it out. Let's do it the normal way because I kind of backed in. That's not the way you normally do it. Normally you go home price is going to be home price. Usually you start with the home price which is that number. And then you do the down payment percent, down payment percent of the 20%. Let's make that a, des a percent a number percentized font underline. That's gonna be the down payment, not rate, just down payment. Multiplying this times that, that's how much we'd put down. That's matching up. That looks like what we would expect. And that means that the, that the finance amount financed is going to be equal to this number minus the down payment. So we're going to have to finance 209, 260. So assuming we can get that financing then, and we can throw down 
the 52 315 three then how much home could we purchase let's assume the rate at this point we could use the same rate to kind of tie this all out let's let's assume that the rate is six this is six percent on the home too it might be different but we'll we'll choose the same six percent let's because it'll tie everything together that will really tie the room together like a good rug does that rug really tied the room together and so then we're going to say that it's the years are going to be 30 years and then the payment so now we can calculate the payment so now if we we're going to do that let's see how much our payment would be if we could finance now the 209 six two sixty which we got because we're trying to get as much house as we could after we put the 20 percent down so we're going to say negative payment pmt negative instead of equal our payment calculation is going to be the rate now this rate is a yearly rate now we're talking months so i want to take that rate divided by 12 this time to make it a monthly rate comma number of periods is going to be 30 that's in years we need months so times 12 and then comma the present value which is going to be the loan amount not the home price but the amount of the loan because we put, put we threw down 52,315 on the down payment that was that's a down down payment that down payment is down so there's the 1,255 now let's let's make this a skinny let's do our amortization table we'll construct this whole thing from that little set of data that we had let's make this blue and bordered now we've seen these amortization tables in the past. So I'm gonna do this a little bit more quickly here, but just, we're just gonna tie everything together. Just like, that rug, just like that rug does with the room. It ties it, that rug really tied the room together. So then we're gonna say that we have the, let's put our headers up top. It's gonna to be year, month, payment, interest, and then loan D, hold on a second decrease notice I'm, i have two columns here because i don't i don't want to use the wrap text and i still want a long header loan balance let's move these down so they're down here i'm going to take these i'm going to control x or cut them and put them right there and then let's make this a a header thing by going to the font group making it black and white and centered I'll make these two a little bit skinnerized. I'm gonna skinnerize them to make them skinnier. That's what you call it. That's what I call it. They're gonna be skinnerized. We're skinnerizing the columns. And then let's let's do an autofill, taking this down 360, 360, de not degrees really, but kind of like whenever you hear 360, I kind of feel like it's degrees because it's like doing a 360 on like a snowboard or something. I'm going to center that and then we're going to say there it is and then the years are going to be equal to zero and this is going to be equal we're going to do our roundup our fancy roundup to pick up the years round up round them up what do you want to round up I want to take that number that's what I want to round up and divide it by 12 and then comma round it up to the whole number round it up round them up the little doggies round up the little doggies and then I'm going to double click on this one and it's going to double click on the fill button fill handle button and there we have it the roundups that is that's what we have when I, that's the it I was referring to okay so then on the payments well let's make the loan balance is is going to be the loan balance is that 209 260 and then the payments are going to be equal to that one two five five f4 on the keyboard make it an absolute you only need a mixed reference but an absolute will work the interest is equal to the 209 260 times the rate of that six percent that's outside of our table so we need to make it absolute so we can copy it down you only need a mixed reference but an absolute works dollar sign before the q and the 12 and then we'll divide that by 12 because that would be the yearly rate and we need the monthly rate and then we'll subtract these two out payment minus the interest that's the decrease in the in the balance loan decrease or the principal decrease you can call it and then we got the prior balance minus the loan decrease and that's our new item let's copy these down these four double click the fill button fill button double click and it should be zero at the bottom notice we can always double check this kind of thing using a trusty loan calculator online if we wanted to i'm not 
promoting this particular calculator, but there's a lot of them out there and you could, you could plug this stuff into the loan calculator and say, okay, what if I had my loan of 261,574? Actually, no, that's not the loan amount. I have my loan of 209,260. It's a 30 year. The rate is at 6% monthly. Calculate it, throw it down. And there's our, our 1255 about, because we rounded it and you can create your amortization table, however, and so you could double check your amortization table and that's what I would use it for. So for example, after the third payment, we're at, or let's check this 21041 after the third payment. So we can check that out. We could say, okay, third payment is, is 210 about, so it looks like it's calculating, but this amortization table is actually tied into this data set, which you can't do as much. So I, if I change this data set, the whole thing is going to change, which you can't, you can't run those kind of projections that are all integrated as easily with the loan calculator thingy. So let's go, but it's a great tool to double check and look up some other stuff sometimes to narrow things down. I'm going to make this blue and bordered. This is another thing we can't do with the loan calculator as much as give that year by year breakout, which we'll do next. We'll do that next. And that will be done thusly. We're <laughs> We're going to select column R and let's make that. I want to copy that skinny home tab and paint brushy the Y to make it skinny. Why? Because I want to save some room with column Y by making it skinny. And then I'm going to copy the headers on over, get rid of the months. We don't need the months. And then I'm just going to make the year by year breakout from year one to down to 30 years because it's a 30 year loan. 3030 year and then we're going to say center that and I'm going to put some zeros here just because I'm going to use a pivot table later and zeros you shouldn't have like blank cells in there that's just best practices and I like to practice the best stuff so then we're going to say okay so then I'm going to sum if equals the sum if uh, brackets the range I want to pick up is this is the kind of criteria range I would call it they just call it the range right there and I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard because we're going to want to copy that to the right. And then comma, the criteria is that one. So I want you to say, hey, thing, if there's this thing, which is a one in that range, then I want you to sum up the sum range, related sum range, which is going to be this payment range right there. And I also want to be able to copy this to the right. And so this, this cell right there, that number one, I want it to move down, but not to the right. So I need to put a dollar sign before the Z and not the three. It's going to be a mixed reference is what that's called. The U, U, uh, I do want to move over to the V, V next time. So I'm going to say, okay. And boom, boom, bang, bang, call, pull it over, over. And there's the 12, 4, 86. Let's check that number because that's, that's should be the sum of these bad doggies those bad doggies summed up 12 486 there it is looks good and then i'll do the min equals the min ifs brackets and then we've got the min ifs bracket range we want to take this one on the range that's not where my home isn't on that range but it's another range home on the range. this is going to be the criteria range which is this one and then is that the yeah and then comma and then the criteria is the one and we can copy that down boom and we can copy these down boom we can total it up down here copy it down total it up that's what we do in excel most of the time copy it down total it up copy down total up here we go we're going to sum it up with the total and copy that across not all the way to the end because this one is like a the balance column and then i'm going to make that blue and bordered blue and border border blue border blue there's the border there's the blue let's now do the same thing with a pivot table as we have seen in the past i could so i can't select this header that's what the downside is when you add a table but don't need it i don't need it i'm just going to select all this stuff do the same thing in pivot table format just to show you different options on how you can do this stuff pivot table they're super cool and impressive if you can pivot a table most people don't know how to pivot we're going to insert and we're going to say pivot table 
and I'm going to put it in the existing worksheet. I'm going to put it right there. It's like a pivot table. Holy moly. I'm going to drop the price on the home, you know, 30% right there because I'm impressed by the pivot, the way you pivoted that table. And then I'll add the payment, the interest, the decrease, the balance. And then we'll do the, the formatting on these as we've seen in the past. So I know I'm doing this quickly, but this is kind of a recap just so we can put all this data together in one place here. We're going to brackets, get rid of the dollar sign, decimal down, down. Let's get in the rhythm on this one this time. We're going to hit this one, value field settings. We're going to go to the number group. We're going currency, bracketed, dollar sign gone, decimal down, down. Okay, okay. Next one, value field settings, number format, currency, brackets, dollar sign gone, decimal down, down, and okay. Okay, last one's a little bit tricky because it's not a sum one, but instead a min thing, min thing. So then we're gonna go to the number formatting. This is the same currency, brackets, dollar sign gone, decimal down, down, and okay, okay. Okay, I said okay. How many times? So I'm gonna, let's make this a little skinnier. I already said okay. Okay, so then it, there it is. So now we've got this set up. So we got all that kind of built up from that, from that first piece of information. And once you have something like this set up, you can change things, of course. I can say, well, what if I put down the, the nine, thousand or something like that then this is going to populate for us and i believe it should it should all work through here if we got everything tied out the whole schedule ties out the pivot table will will not you will might have to refresh the pivot table like right click and refresh the pivot table that's kind of like the downside of the pivot table but you can recreate it if it gets if it gets uh finicky on the fit on the pivot table as well so that's the benefit of of Excel. You can run different scenarios on that. You can also change the rate pretty easily. The the number of years is a little bit more difficult because we calculated it these years here. If you were dependent just on this as the calculation for the years, it was easier to calculate and change the years as well. But just note how whatever your scenario is, if it's going to be complex, if you're talking about things that are going to happen multiple years into the future, like a home purchase that you're going to do in five years, and then the things can, you're going to have a home for 30 years, your calculations, your estimates can get quite complex quite quickly. And Excel has the flexibility to, to, to look at it from different angles in a way that you can't really get so much if you're kind of piecing together other tools oftentimes.